And now, from New York, the Jerry Langford Show, with Jerry's guest, Tony Randall, Richard Dreyfus, Rodney Dangerfield, Dr. Joyce Brothers, Lil Brown and the Orchestra, and little old me, Ed Hurley. And now, say hello to Jerry! A pleasant good evening to you. You look like a great audience. Louis, yeah. how are you? Lou Brown, ladies and gentlemen, and the uh, marvelous Langford Orchestra. Lou, Lou. Uh, and Ed, how are you tonight? Uh, very well, Jerry. Wonderful. I'm sorry I woke you. <laughs> I won't say that Ed drinks a lot, but he woke up in a Long Island motel next to a duck. Now, what worried, what worried Ed was the duck was smiling and smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Don't try and make up. Uh, will you excuse me a minute, folks? I really have to do this. I wasn't able to get to my dentist today, and the dentist happens to be watching the show. Check it out, Doc. <laughs> you see a couple of thousand dollars worth? Sure you do. I'm glad I kept my appointment with the proctologist. Now, um... <laughs> oh, did you hear about the nearsighted vampire that bit Dolly Parton in the neck? <laughs> Two, three, four. Twice. Do you know what they call a Hebrew hooker? No, what do they call a Hebrew hooker? A jacuzzi. <laughs> oh, oh, Moving right along. And so this nun goes to the doctor because she knows that every couple of months she has to get a physical. She goes to the doctor, this nun, and she says, I'm terribly nervous, doctor. And the doctor said, don't be nervous, Sister Teresa. Just go behind the screen, take off the habit, put a sheet around you. I'll be back there momentarily. She indeed goes behind the screen, takes off the habit, puts a sheet around herself, and she's really apprehensive, uptight, nervous wreck, sweaty palms time. The doctor comes back. He says, are you all right, sister? She said, I'm fine. He said, good. He put his hand under the sheet on her back, and he said, say, 88. She said, 88. He said, very good. Then he put his hand under the sheet on her stomach. And he said, say, 88. And she said, oh, 88. He said, very good. Then he put his hand on the sheet a third time, this time on one of her breasts. And he said, say, 88. And she said, one, two, three. I see what they want. Aha. So a man is in bed with his wife. And his wife is lying on her back, and he proceeds to rub her stomach. And as he rubs her stomach, he says, I love you, I love you, I love you. She said, lower. He said, I love you. <laughs> There's nothing better than when I see a nice lady in the audience you know why? Because when you have a lady in the audience and she's smiling, it pumps up any performer. It's a joy to behold. And you've smiled from the moment I came out here. Didn't they tell you there's no soliciting? <laughs> but I love a lady that smiles, and any lady that smiles deserves the very, very best. Here's the good part, sweetheart. Uh, is there anyone here from Jersey? Big deal. Okay. <laughs> now, the reason that I picked this charming lady is because I'm told it's her birthday, and ordinarily people sing happy birthday to the individual or the recipient of that birthday, but we sing it differently, if I may. M is for the million things you gave me, O is for the other stuff I had, T is for the tears we shed a lot, H is for the happiness we're glad, put them all together, they spell moth. Now... <laughs> And you were the two people that were married just this afternoon? What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> For the two people married this afternoon, we should sing night and day. Now, when you're married 10 years, we'll sing once in a while. <laughs> After 25 years, we'll sing we did it before and we can do it again.
as Ed told you, ladies and gentlemen, we have a super show for you tonight. We'd like you to sit back and relax, and here it comes. We'll be back in just a little while. And now, direct from New York, it's the Jerry Langford Show, with guest host Tony Randall, and his special guests, Shelley Winters, Thor Vidal, Tony Bennett, as always, Lou Brown and the orchestra, and a little old me, Ed Hurley, he. And now, say hello to Tony! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. I have some sad news for you. Earlier today, my writing staff was executed in Central Park by the network firing squad. So there will be no sensational Randall monologue this evening. No embarrassing display of emotion, please. Instead, we're going to do something a little bit different this evening. A lot different, if you ask me. We're going to give you a glimpse. Turn it over, please. Thank you. Into the future. It isn't often that you can call someone a sure thing in the entertainment business. After all, the verdict is always in your hands, isn't it? But I think tonight, after you've met... <laughs> my first guest, you'll agree with me that he's destined for greatness in one way or another. So will you please give your warmest greetings to the newest king of comedy, Rupert Pupkin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself. My name is Rupert Pupkin. I was born in Clifton, New Jersey, which was not at that time a federal offense. Is there anyone here from Clifton? Oh, good, we can all relax now. Now, I'd like to begin by saying that my parents were too poor to afford me a childhood in Clifton. But the fact is, you know, that no one is allowed to be really too poor in Clifton, because once you fall below a certain level, they exile you to Passaic. <laughs> well, you know, my parents did put the first two down payments on my childhood, don't get me wrong. But they did also return me to the hospital as defective. <laughs> But, like everyone else, I grew up in large part thanks to my mother. If she were only here today, I'd say, Hey, Mom, what are you doing here? You've been dead for nine years. <laughs> but seriously, you should have seen my mother. She was wonderful. Blonde, beautiful, intelligent, alcoholic. <laughs> we used to drink milk together after school. Mine was homogenized. Hers was loaded. <laughs> Once they picked her up for speeding, they clocked her doing 50. All right, but in our garage? <laughs> and you know, when they tested her, they found out that her alcohol had 2% blood. <laughs> ah, but we used to choke together, Mom and me, until the tears would stroll down her face and she would throw up! Uh, yeah, and who would clean it up? Huh, not Dad. He was too busy down at O'Grady's throwing up on his own. <laughs> yeah. In fact, until I was 16, I thought throwing up was a sign of maturity. <laughs> you know, while the other kids were off in the woods sneaking cigarettes, <laughs> I was hiding behind the house with my fingers down my throat. <laughs> The only problem was, I never got anywhere. Until one day, my father caught me. And you know, just as he was giving me a final kick in the stomach for luck, I managed to heave all over his new shoes. <laughs> That's it, I thought. I've made it. I'm finally a man. <laughs> yeah. But as it turned out, I was wrong. That was the only attention my father ever gave me. 
Yeah, he was usually too busy out in the park playing ball with my sister Rose. <laughs> but today, I must say, thanks to those many hours of practice, my sister Rose has grown into a fine man. <laughs> I wasn't especially interested in athletics. The only exercise I ever got was when the other kids picked on me. Yeah, they used to beat me up once a week, usually Tuesday. <laughs> and after a while, the school worked it into the curriculum. <laughs> and if you knocked me out, you got extra credit. <laughs> Except there was this one kid, poor kid, he was afraid of me, and I used to tell him, hit me, hit me, what's the matter with you? Don't you want to graduate? <laughs> As for me, hey, I was the youngest kid in the history of the school to graduate in traction. <laughs> but, you know, my only real interest right from the beginning was show business. Even as a young man, I began at the very top, collecting autographs. <laughs> now, a lot of you are probably wondering why Jerry isn't with us tonight. Well, I'll tell you, the fact is he's tied up. And I'm the one who tied him. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know you think I'm joking, but believe me, that's the only way I could break into show business. <laughs> by hijacking Jerry Langford. Right now, Jerry is strapped to a chair somewhere in the middle of this city. <laughs> well, go ahead and laugh. Thank you, I appreciate it. But the fact is, I'm here. Now, tomorrow you'll know that I wasn't kidding and you'll think I was crazy. But look, I figure it this way. Better to be king for a night than schmuck for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>